Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist. I have been practicing cardiology at the Texas Medical Center for more than 30 years. Today we are going to look at the differential diagnosis of ST segment elevation on an electrocardiogram. So let us begin. This presentation is for educational purpose only and this is not a medical advice. Just to give you a, a, an overview of uh, basic electrocardiographic representation of a heartbeat, we have the P wave which represents the atrial activity followed by the PR interval which represents the conduction through the AV node. Then we have the Q or S complex which represents the left ventricular depolarization. Then we have the ST segment followed by the T wave which represents the left ventricular repolarization. This presentation is going to focus on the ST segment abnormalities particularly ST segment elevation. There are a number of uh, important conditions uh, in cardiology that can cause ST segment elevation and we should be able to differentiate uh, the ST elevation from various causes. The most important of which are acute myocardial infarction. The other conditions that can cause abnormal ST segment elevation include early repolarization, acute pericarditis, both right and left bundle branch blocks, left ventricular hypertrophy and very importantly hyperkalemia which is an acute medical emergency just like uh, acute myocardial infarction. Similarly, pulmonary embolus can also present with uh, minor ST elevations which we will look at and of course, Prince metal angina is associated with ST segment elevation which comes down after the relief of the coronary spasm. For those of you who are hearing the word Prince metal angina for the first time, it is a type of angina which, which is associated with the coronary artery spasm. And as a result of a coronary artery spasm, there is ST segment elevation which resolves with nitroglycerin which relaxes the smooth muscle in the coronary arteries and relieve the coronary spasm. Okay, here we have a series of electrocardiograms and I am going to give you a chance to look at the electrocardiogram, identify if there is ST segment elevation or not then the location of the ST segment elevation and your most probable diagnosis of that ST segment elevation in that particular electrocardiogram. Here you can pause the video for a second, uh, make up your diagnosis, your differential diagnosis and then you can continue when you are ready. In this electrocardiogram, we are looking at significant ST elevation in lead 2, 3 and ABF. I want you to pay particular attention to the nature of the ST segment elevation. As you can see the ST segment is almost straight up from the baseline which is the P or, or the TP interval and it is lifted almost 3 to 4 millimeters and it imperceptibly blends with the upstroke of the T wave. This is characteristic of an acute myocardial infarction. So let me repeat again. In an acute myocardial infarction, we see an ST segment elevation which is going straight up and blending with the upstroke of the T wave. And interestingly enough, we see ST elevation in lead 2, 3, ABF and to certain degree in V5 and V6. Uh, so this represents infralateral acute myocardial infarction or STEMI. Along with that, we also have tall R waves in this electrocardiogram with ST segment depression which is representing the reci reciprocal ST depression related to the infralateral myocardial infarction. We could also argue in this electrocardiogram the presence of tall R waves may make us think about the possibility of posterior involvement also. That is besides the point but I just wanted to bring that in since we are looking at the whole electrocardiogram and since we are treating the whole patient. Let us move to the next tracing now. You can pause the video here for a second, make up your diagnosis and then we will proceed. 
Here we see an electrocardiogram with widening of the QRS complex in lead 1 and V5 to V6. This is representing left bundle branch block. So, it is not uncommon to see ST segment elevation in the presence of a left bundle branch block in the anterior leads. It is more pronounced in V1 compared to V2. Then we have the reciprocal ST depression and biphasic T waves in the lateral leads. So, ST segment elevation is uh, a common finding in patients with left bundle branch block. When patients are present with the chest pain and left bundle branch block, when we see these ST segments, uh, we may be tempted to think we are dealing with a STEMI. However, the clinical presentation is what is going to determine whether this patient is having an acute STEMI or whether these changes are just secondary to the left bundle branch block. Okay, what is your diagnosis here? Okay, we are looking at an electrocardiogram which shows a sinus bradycardia. There is ST segment elevation in lead 2, 3, ABF and even in the anterior leads and to certain degree in the lateral leads. So, we have generalized ST segment elevation. Is this uh, similar to the inferior infralateral myocardial infarction we saw? No, this is quite different. The ST segments are coving downwards. They are concave. In addition to that, if you look in the lateral chest leads, the J point has a notch as it is exemplified in this electrocardiogram. When we see this type of changes on an electrocardiogram, we always should consider early repolarization. And generally, the early repolarization does not exceed more than 2 to 3 millimeters and they can be found in multiple leads. Later during the presentation, we are going to contrast this to a patient with the acute pericarditis and see what the differences are. Okay, you can pause the video and tell us what is your diagnosis, then we will proceed. Here we have a classic example of an acute pericarditis. There is ST segment elevation which is almost 3 to 4 millimeters in practically every lead on the electrocardiogram except V1 and ABR. The ST segments are again concave in nature. They are different from the ST segment elevation we saw in the early repolarization and this is an example of an acute pericarditis. The important feature is that it is uh, generalized noted throughout the electrocardiogram except in ABR and perhaps V1 and it is associated with a concave shape ST segment elevation. In contrast to an acute myocardial infarction where the ST segments are straight lifted from the baseline and it blends with the T wave. It is almost like part of the hyper acute T wave in an acute STEMI patient. Okay, you can pause the video here, make up your diagnosis and when you return we will proceed. Here let us look at some of the features that are pertinent to this particular electrocardiogram and the underlying, underlying pathology. First of all, the ST segment is short. It is sort of slightly concave. There is tall, there are, then we see tall peaked T waves. The interesting thing is you should look at the base of the T waves are relatively narrow. And when we see this one, especially in the anterior leads, we should always think of what hyperkalemia high potassium level, renal patient on dialysis, missed the dialysis in the emergency room with congestive heart failure, fluid overload and you look at this electrocardiogram, then you should immediately check the serum potassium level. There are many other things that go wrong in a patient with hyperkalemia depending on the serum level. Let us look at some of those changes. When the serum potassium level is 5.5 to 6.5, the ST segment is elevated. It is short along with tall peaked T waves. However, when the potassium level is between 6.5 and 8.0, 
then we see widening of the QRS uh, duration along with peaked T waves and when the serum potassium level goes beyond 8 milli equivalents then we see bradycardia absent P waves and wild QRS complexes. This is an overview of hyperkalemia and the associated ST segment elevation in patients with hyperkalemia. Okay. Do you see ST segment elevation and if so, what is causing the ST segment changes? In this electrocardiogram, we see there is some ST depression, but that is not what we are interested. We see some ST elevation in V1 v2 and v3 along with that we have increase in, or the negative voltage in v2 and increase voltage in v6 together we also have a left atrial enlargement so we are dealing with an electrocardiogram which reflects left ventricular hypertrophy with the strain which also causes ST segment elevation in the anterior leads. It is an important thing to remember because when these patients present with chest pain, you, we may be mistaking this for a, a, an acute STEMI. Next, what is your diagnosis here? Do we see ST segment elevation? How do you describe the ST segment elevation in this electrocardiogram? First of all, let us talk about we got significant ST depression in 2, 3 ABF, but more importantly, we see huge ST segment elevation and uplifting of the T wave, and this is known as the tombstone T waves. As I said, the ST segment right from the J point goes straight up and just continues as part of the T wave before the T wave downward deflection begins. This is an hyperacute phase of an acute anteroseptal myocardial infarction with reciprocal changes in the inferior leads. This is quite contrasting to the electrocardiogram we just saw in patients with hyperkalemia where the, the T wave has a narrow base, but in patients with acute myocardial infarction the ST segment and the T wave they all blend together and produce a broad based T waves which are called tombstone T waves. All right, what is your diagnosis? What do we see here? Here we have normal sinus rhythm, then we have a, what looks like a right bundle branch block and along with that we have ST segment elevation which is sort of similar to what we saw in the previous electrocardiogram except this is like a mirror image of that. We have a straightening of the ST segment with the T wave inversion going downwards and this is known as the Brugada syndrome. We are going to look at some of the features of Brugada syndrome in the next slide, but uh, we are dealing with a right bundle branch block with ST segment elevation and T wave inversion. This is another differential diagnosis of ST segment elevation in the anterior leads. We should not confuse this with uh, an acute STEMI. Here are some of the features of uh, Brugada, B R U G A D A, Brugada syndrome. You may get a question on your exams. Brugada syndrome is characterized by prolonged P wave, broad P wave with some PQ prolongation. Then we have the J point elevation. J point is where the ST segment begins. As I showed you in the electrocardiogram, convex type of ST segment elevation. Then we have inverted T wave. So this is characteristic of uh, Brugada syndrome. Occasionally we can see some minor ST elevation in the anterior leads, especially in lead V1 and V2 and they could be a subtle sign of a very serious medical problem namely acute pulmonary embolus. Some of the other features that can help us in this particular case include right axis deviation, sinus tachycardia, some evidence of right atrial en enlargement or strain, incomplete right bundle branch block and all of these things may give some indirect evidence of uh, acute pulmonary embolus. Acute pulmonary embolus can also present with a picture of an acute myocardial infarction. Okay, what is your diagnosis here? Actually, we did not put that one on the list here, so it is not any one of those conditions. Think, think hard. What do we see? 
we have a short PR interval. We have a delta wave which is very clearly seen in the lateral chest leads. We have QS complexes in 3 and AVF. Then we have ST segment elevation. We are dealing with uh, what? WPW, Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome can present with short PR interval, delta waves, and sometimes ST segment elevation in various leads, along with uh, Q waves in the inferior leads and tall R waves in the anterior leads which are all variations of WPW. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief overview of ST segment elevation and the differential diagnosis of ST segment elevation on the, an electrocardiogram. And I hope uh, this has been useful to you. And please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to hear a presentation on any particular topic, uh, please leave us some comments below and we will see you next time. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. Thank you for your time.